It's like something from a science fiction film, and yet it really exists. The legendary Mercedes-Benz C111. Most young people are surprised to find out how old it is, 46, positively middle-aged. For car buffs on the wrong side of 50, it brings back childhood memories. The C111 featured in a card game, and it was also available as a battery-powered model car. It's a pity that it never made it out onto the road. As Michel Bock, head of Mercedes-Benz Classic, explains, it was presented as an experimental vehicle, and that's what it remained. Back then, they wanted to test whether it was possible to serially produce a vehicle with a fiberglass chassis and produce a small production run for the U.S. market. But that idea didn't last long. Mercedes engineers continued to develop their baby, far beyond the concept car stage. It made its first appearance at the Frankfurt International Motor Show in 1969. The car broke new ground in terms of both engineering and design. The first model included a 280 horsepower three rotor Weinkel engine with top speeds of 270 kilometers an hour. In 1970, Mercedes presented a thoroughly revised version of the C111 with a four-rotor, 350-horsepower Wankel engine. The two-seater could accelerate from standstill to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.9 seconds. But there were a number of arguments against launching a series production. The Wankel engine was a gas guzzler with little torque, and it wasn't reliable or durable enough to meet the carmaker's standards. Yet there was no question of terminating the C111 project. The engineers and designers had put their hearts and souls into it. Many were keen to reinvent Mercedes, and they were enthusiastic about the motorsport technology in the rear suspension, where the wheels boasted three wishbones and two trailing arms. Michel Bock of Mercedes-Benz Classic says that the Mercedes Motorsport Department, which had achieved outstanding successes in the 1930s and had, in principle, won the Formula One World Championships twice in the 1950s, together with Fangio, still existed in R&D. And they were driven by the desire to build sports cars alongside the sedans and station wagons. And they engaged with this topic with the knowledge of subsequent developments in the field. He says they constructed this vehicle with the help of computers, with the aim of using as few aerodynamic aids as possible. The shape of the chassis alone should be enough, and they were extremely successful. A sports car with no spoilers. That's pretty unusual. Mercedes achieved the necessary aerodynamic qualities with the car's streamlined wedge-shaped design. But it was the vehicle's head-turning chassis that was another main obstacle to mass production. It was made of fiberglass reinforced plastic, and at that time, the material couldn't provide sufficient stability. It also didn't meet contemporary safety standards. Crumple zones were out of the question. Plastic doesn't buckle, it snaps. Despite its impressive performance and appearance, the Wankel engine and reinforced plastic chassis meant that the riding was on the wall for the C111. Its wedge design seemed almost revolutionary for the rather conservative Mercedes brand and help give the company a facelift. The car might have looked completely new on the outside, but in the inside, it screamed Mercedes. Nothing here seems to have been designed specially for the C111.
In all likelihood, the horizontally fitted radio arose from necessity rather than by design. The cockpit was pretty cramped. In this C-111, there's no rotor-driven Wankel engine, nor any piston-driven diesel engine. In 1970, Mercedes installed gasoline engines in two cars. Their performance data might not be as impressive as the earlier models, but it's still easy to understand the lure of the C111. In fact, allegedly Mercedes was sent blank checks in the post after they presented the car at the IAA in Frankfurt and a few months later at the Geneva Motor Show. More than a dozen versions of the C111 were built, but none of them were ever put up for sale. They stand in Mercedes' own museum and no doubt in some secret garages somewhere. There is no market for these cars and there probably never will be. This C111, like all the rest, is unique, a one-off. Its value, hard to say. Priceless? Certainly. It must be worth at least several million euros.